Hey guys, I'm going to make a tutorial about Linkios for Mac OS X and how to stack some photos. Alright, so first what we'll do is we will pull up our photographs that we've taken. I took these with a Nikon uh, D5100 DSLR in RAW format, which is .NEF. So uh, here's some photographs of Jupiter that I took. I'm just going to take a few that I think are good. Whoops, lost them there. All right, just a few of these. And what we do is we add them in list. So in Linkios, you have, a, uh, you have some tabs across the top. And this is how you're going to be working from left to right. Uh, you start off with list um, by, simply adding, uh, by simply adding files. Now, you can, you can use the plus or minus buttons down here to add and subtract files. Uh, now, down here, you have a magnifier. So what I'll do is I'll magnify it to 25% until I can find what I'm looking for. And then I will slowly magnify it. And then the good thing about Linkios is it, it keeps whatever you're looking at in that same position. So as you move through photos, you stay in that same relative position of where you're looking. Um, okay, so here are the photos that I have of Jupiter, and I want to go ahead and stack them. So the first thing I need to do is align them. Now, this Jupiter is here, but all the other Jupiters are everywhere else. So in order to get them aligned, we will switch to the next tab, the Align tab, and we'll align them. So based on whichever, whichever uh, file you have checked is which ones it's going to align. And the way you align it is you need a reference point. So naturally, it'll take the first file and use it as a reference. Uh, and so, oh, and what I didn't mention in list is that you can add a video in here, and it'll break down every single f uh, frame of that video into like, you know, depending how long the video is, a few thousand frames, a few thousand images. And if your computer isn't strong enough to handle that, I don't suggest doing it. Okay, so back to aligning. Um, all these are unaligned, so we need to align them. The way we align them is we need to draw a reference box. So I'm going to reference the first one by clicking reference down here. It usually already has it, but if you want to reference a different one, you can reference a different one. I have found that if the objects aren't in the same general area, it's going to be hard to get them to, uh, to align. And so to align, we'll have to zoom all the way out, and we'll have to see how far these objects actually go from it. From one another. So this one comes out this far, that one goes out that far, this one comes out this low. So I want to make a box around all of these and make sure that every single thing that I want stacked is within that box. Alright, so it's all within that box. So if you have one that's out here and one that's down here, you're not going to get it because this thing, you know, if you try to do the whole thing, that's as big as that box gets right there. It doesn't get very big. You can move that box around. Uh, and so the smaller the box is, the, the better it'll be. Okay, so we got a small box. We have this one set as the reference, and then I'll hit Align. And then you'll see these slowly turn green. Once they're green, that means they're aligned. If it didn't turn green, that means it didn't align. Don't worry. If it didn't align, um, you, can, you can try to realign it or maybe try referencing a different point. Uh, sometimes you just can't get them to align. Um, you know, open it in a different software and kind of put them in the same general position if they're too far apart from each other. Sometimes you can use this specific key down here. Um, oh, and you can enter in the X, Y axis and size of the red box, but I like to just draw it. Um, you can say, I specifically want this file specifically over here. It's already aligned, so it's not letting me, but you would click specific and you would highlight that. It gets a little confusing, so I just suggest having them in the same general area. So once you hit align and they're all green, they'll be in the same spot. All right, so we have them all perfectly aligned. Now we'll analyze them. Now, I only have a few photographs here, so there's really no need for me to analyze it, but this is more like if you have, you know, a lot of photographs in here. I'm talking hundreds, maybe thousands of photographs. Uh, then some photographs you're not going to want in the image because if you zoom in on the image itself, you'll notice uh, in a couple of these photographs, I have some smudge spots that are appearing 
And this one has a smudge spot there. This one has a smudge up there. But my optics a smudge there that's almost right on the, the red dot of Jupiter. Um, and so if you had a lot of photos and you wanted to get rid of the ones that didn't have smudge spots, you could just manually remove them. Or you can hit the analyze. And what the analyze will do is it will go through all the photos and it will look for things that will stand out in the stacked photo. Because once I stack all these photos, if there's something weird out here on the side in just one of these photos, it's going to appear in the stacked, uh, in the final stacked uh, image. And, and we don't want anything looking funny. So that's what the analyzer does. I'm just going to skip it because I've already manually analyzed these photos. And I'm going to go ahead and leave those optic smudges there because these are the best photos I had gotten from Jupiter. So then we'll go to stack. And the way stack works is this is the actual... Um, the actual, uh, you know, resolution that you're going to, I can't remember what word I'm trying to use here, but however big you want to make it, now you can write it down here, how big you want to make it, uh, you can say I want it to take up the entire thing, and so you'll, you'll draw a box of how big you want the image to be, uh, and so you can make the image really small if you want, you can say I only want the image to be a certain size, but I want this image to be pretty big, so I'm going to draw my red line, you can see it. All right, so my red box uh, is about this big, and that's how big my image is going to be. And so you can make it small, you can make it big, however you want it. Um, once they're all aligned, and you have all your images, and you have your box set for how you want it to be, how you want it to be stacked, then you go ahead and hit stack down here at the bottom and it will stack all the images. And up here where it says list and stack, it'll stick it in the stack section. Did I hit stack? I thought I hit stack. Tell me my computer's tripping out on me. Oh, here we go. Oh, it's my damn recorder. There we go. Sorry about that. I have a pause button down here. All right, so it stacked the images. Now I can always. This is the stacked image of all the others. Now I can go back to these other ones and say, you know, let's say I looked at this stack image and I see something I don't like, and I'm like, oh, it was that one image. I can come over here and take out that one image and then restack it as long as you have your red box made. All right, so here's my stacked image, and when you restack it, it deletes the old stacked image. So. Um, it replaces it basically. Okay, so once you have it stacked, now you can start editing. From this point, I would suggest just going to File um, and Save Image. And anytime you can save this project itself, but I don't really save projects. You can save the project if you want, so you can go back to it. Maybe if you're using th stacking thousands of photos or hundreds of photos, you would go to Save Image right here, um, find a location for it, and then name it. And it always saves it as a TIFF file, so you'll have to you'll have to change that. So you can you can save it before editing it here, and then open it in whatever other software you want to use to edit, um, or you can do some editing here. And what I like to do to my astrophotography before I send it to Adobe Photoshop CC for Mac and start editing it is I will raise the gamma. I'm sorry, lower the gamma, and that will bring out a little more detail. And then I'll kind of lower the whiteness or raise the black. Just kind of get it where it where it looks a little better. Uh, but don't play with these too much because sometimes you can't go back. And you'll have to restack the item and you'll have to restack it again and start over. But if you did want to, if you didn't want to use any other software, you can you can use these other tabs. Now these four tabs are for editing, and these four tabs four tabs are for stacking. So deconvolution is, I'll have to bring this up again, deconvolution um, has a radius and a threshold, and I found that if I add a lot of it, see that little blue bar there means that it's thinking, my computer's pretty slow, so you'll have to give it a second to finish thinking. But basically, the radius is the amount that you'll use, and the threshold is how strong of the amount that you're using, basically. All right, so I added some deconvolution, and then we can do some sharp mass. Um, this one has gain and radius, ba uh, basically the same thing. You know, one affects the other. 
and so it'll it you know the unsharp mask will really bring it out but it also adds a lot of noise um, now the wave the wavelet is is where you can do some mult some various adjustments uh, you can change the frequency um, you can play with all this stuff up here I don't really mess with it too much like I said I, I edited in, in Adobe Photoshop but this top one I found is basically brightness and then all these other ones are different forms of clarity like you'll notice it it does some weird stuff to the image gives it some and I found if you really want to play with it if you really want to play with it just max it out see what kind of damage it does then bring it back and max it out see what kind of damage it does bring it back and so yeah these these four do some weird stuff to it I'm not really sure what what they are exactly but I'm sure you can find a good balance in there uh, and this last one not really sure what it does oh yeah it looks like a noise reduction maybe or some sort of sharpener noise reduction Let's see if we can raise the frequency here so you can play with it a lot and then the process is is another is basically a multiple wave it's it shows everything that you just did so instead of going to each of these they're right here and you can add more wavelets and more um, unsharp mask and more deconvolution so this is how you edit your stacked image and once you're done same way just come down here to save image or option command s for mac save your image where you want to save it and that's how you stack images in linkios